Hi everybody, it's uh, Jack Miller from Sets ASU Rock Tree Division, and in this episode I'm going to show you how to do a dual deployment rocket um, instead of the single deployment that we did in the last video. And what I'm going to do to start out with that is I'm going to add a body tube. So I added a body tube right now, it automatically puts it down here. Now I don't really want it to be down there. I want it to actually be in this upper stage so I don't have to mess around with all these fins and stuff. And like I showed you earlier in the uh, introduction, you can actually take these components and I'm going to move it up here, right below the nose cone. So you can see it, it popped this little guy up way over here. And I'm also gonna take this parachute, stick it in there, in the body tube. I'm gonna take the shock cord, stick it in there. And the APRA, I'm actually gonna take, I'm gonna stick it up in the nose cone because that's where I wanted earlier and I didn't change that. Come on, get up there. Okay, everything's up there. I'm gonna have to mess around with some lengths real quick just to make sure they fit inside here. Cause Every time you move these components, it's gonna save this position relative to, and it's gonna, you know, make it relative to that component, which might mess up some of your stuff. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna decrease this body tube length because we didn't want it that large. Um, and then I'm gonna take this length and I'm gonna increase it so that our parachute and our shock cord is gonna fit inside of it. Okay. So this is a right now. Open Rocket still accepts this. We haven't really made it dual deployment yet. Um, one of the things you have to add for dual deployment that you know you, typically I've always seen is you have to add a coupler and so that your rocket has somewhere to split apart and it'll stay together during flight. So we're gonna add a coupler. I clicked on coupler and I was on this component so it populates that spot right there. The outer diameter, it's already automatically calculated, it's 38 millimeters, inner diameter. So right now that's an issue. You can't have a zero thickness coupler. So we're gonna change that to 36 just for fun. Okay, that was 26, we don't want that. Change it to 36, so we got a pretty thin coupler, about a millimeter on each side. It might not be realistic, but just for the purposes of this video. So length, because it's a 42 millimeter rocket, we're gonna do 42, let's see if this works, we're gonna do 42 times two. And it works, so you get 84 millimeters. That's something, kind of a unique little tool you can use. You can actually do math in here, so you don't have to think about it. And we're going to take this and we're going to do the position relative to that guy. We're going to change this to exactly 42 millimeters so it sits right in the middle. Okay. And let's see. Bottom of the computer. We're going to change this to fiberglass so it's accurate. And so right now you can see you have two body tubes. Over here we have this body tube and we have this body tube. When you have a coupler, um, typically you're going to have something called a switch band, which is like a really small body tube. And that kind of prevents this coupler from having to be glued into this stage, which might cause issues when you're trying to push out the parachute or something like that. But, so that's something you can do. I'm gonna add a switch band real quick, just to be fun. Yeah, insert there. Okay, so you can see it added a huge switch band. We're definitely gonna change that because we don't want it to be that large. Uh, body tube length. We're gonna change it to like half an inch because we don't want it to be that big. So you can see I added this little switch band right here which is pretty good. So then we have this little switch band. Uh, right here. This switch band doesn't really do anything. Uh, let me change this tube coupler length just a little bit so we can have a uh, 38 millimeters on each side, or 42 millimeters on each side. So this is our length right now. Um, let's go with, let's do 10 millimeters. I don't know how much. All right, and then we're gonna change this to 50 or 47. And I don't know why we'll change to 50, but okay, so it sits relatively inside the middle. Um, we're gonna take this guy just for simplicity, we're gonna make it a little bit longer so our shock cord sits outside of the coupler. And typically in this coupler, that's where you're gonna have your, your avionics so that you can deploy the um, the main parachute that'll be in here and the drogue parachute that'll typically be down here. So now we have to add another parachute. We're gonna add a little tiny parachute. Um, we're gonna change any of these things because uh, I showed you how to do it earlier. It's gonna be 11 inch parachute. It's gonna be pretty small. And we're gonna change the deployment though. So we're gonna change it to Apogee. So that's what we really want. I'm gonna change the package length to make it a little more realistic. And we're gonna change where it's located. Okay, so we change the package length and I'm gonna add some shock cord right here. So I changed the shot cord, let's just change it to, I don't know, let's add like four feet, something like that. Change the length of this guy, package diameter, we're gonna make it like, I don't know, an inch and a quarter, just to make it look cool. Okay. So there you go, we have both of those set in there. 
And this guy, this drogue parachute, is set to go off at Apogee. And if you remember from the first video, our main parachute is actually set to go off at Apogee as well. We don't want that. So now we're actually going to take it and we're going to change it to lower, we're going to change it to specific altitude during descent. We change it to there and let's say the altitude we want to be, uh, let's see, we're going up to 3,850 feet. Let's change it to 500 feet. Just for demonstrating purposes. You might not want to do this in real life, but we're going to change it to 500 feet. And once we've modified that, um, this is, you're typically you're just going to get the rocket um, and you can convert it to dual deployment. Just make sure everything lines up with how your rocket's been designed. Double check the stability to make sure everything's going to be okay and that nothing's going to go haywire right now. So everything looks in order. Um, we could add electronics in here, but for demonstrations of the video, we're just going to go ahead, go over to motors and ignition, double check that, and then we're going to go over to flight simulations. So you can see, because we changed the rocket, these simulations are now, uh, they're yellow right now. So there's no simulation data available. But what we're going to do now is new simulation. We're going to have the simulation. We have all the presets in here. Simulate and plot, and we're going to change this from stability versus time, because you don't need to see that again, to vertical motion versus time. Oops, vertical motion versus time. And we hit plot, and you can see here's our rocket. It launches up here. Apogee recovery device deployment occurs right here, perfectly at Apogee, which might not typically happen in the real world. But then you're slowly going down on your drogue parachute until you hit about 500 feet where the recovery device deployment occurs. And you can see this is your main. It's going to cause it to decrease in vertical speed, basically and you're going to slowly drift to Earth, which is be a lot better than having main go off here and then slowly drift down. You're going to have a really fast drogue that's going to come out, and you're going to typically go down at 100 feet per second, and right about here you're going to go anywhere between 15 to 30 feet per second so your rocket doesn't impact really hard. Um, let's see, I'm hit close, and one thing I didn't show you guys yet is a lot of this information right here is pretty helpful, so you don't have to look at the plot to get it. We're going to go ahead and expand this. I didn't need to explain that one. But this gives you velocity off rod, um, apogee, velocity at deployment. So that's how fast you're going when it's deployed. Optimum delay, the optimum delay, delay, optimum delay for your parachutes. Max velocity, 725 feet per second. Max acceleration, blah, blah. And this one is an important one, ground hit velocity. So that's showing that our main parachute deployed will hit the ground at about 16.2 feet per second. And if you want to find how fast your drogue, your, your parachute's going, or your rocket's going with your drogue deployed, you can go back to that simulation and you can check out the, um, here, let's just run this simulation, let's plot it. You can go back here and you can check um, the line that shows you your vertical velocity right now. So this blue one's vertical velocity. And you can see it's actually going down pretty fast right now. It's going about 250 feet per second, which is incredibly fast. So you probably want to increase the size of your drogue parachute if you're going to be doing that. But that's just kind of an introduction of how to do dual deployment. You we'll typically do that with your more your rockets that are going to go really high, or if you just don't want to chase your rocket very far, which chasing it's not very, you know, sometimes it's fun, but sometimes if it's drifting for miles and miles, you don't really want to chase it out. Um, so the next video, we're going to show you actually how to do a two-stage rocket, which is one of the more difficult things we had to master for the university student rocketry competition. So uh, stay tuned for that video, and I uh, hope you guys have a good day. Bye.